Hello, welcome. Today's lesson is on polar or nonpolar both bonds and molecules. Now we've talked about this a little bit before in class when we had the popsicle sticks. If you have um, covalent compounds, they can share electrons. And if the electrons are shared equally, it is called a nonpolar bond. And if the electrons are shared unequally, it is a polar bond. And we're talking about covalent compounds. And if you remember, those are ones between nonmetals and nonmetals. So how do we know if electrons are shared equally or unequally? Well, hopefully you remember that's about electronegativity. So if two atoms have the same or very similar electronegativities, and for this class, we're going to say they're similar enough if they're point less than 0.5 difference in electronegativities. And we're going to use our chart to figure out what the electronegativities are. If one atom has a much higher electronegativity, and once again, we're going to use that 0.5, so 0.5 or higher, different from the other atom, then it's going to pull the electrons closer to it, and you're going to have a polar bond. So the side that is pulling more on the electrons is going to become partially negative, and the other side is going to become partially positive. So we're going to use electronegativities, which you can find in Appendix A4. So pause this video um, if you need to and open up Appendix A4. If you don't have it on you, then use this shortened version that I have put right here on the slide. So use Appendix A4 shown to the side. Determine if the bond is polar or nonpolar. So pause the video. And before you see the answers, decide if O to H is a polar or nonpolar bond, if O to F is polar or nonpolar, P to H, and Cl to Br. I'll wait for you. Give it a try. Well, hopefully, you tried it yourself, and you find that the difference between O and H, which is 3.5 for O and 2.1 for hydrogen, the difference is 1.4. So that's 0.5 or bigger, so yes, OH is a polar bond. What about O to F? O is 3.5, fluorine is 4.0, the difference is 0.5, and that's our break point. 0.5 or greater is different enough to be polar, so yes, that's a yes too. P to H, however, is between 2.1 and 2.1. That's a difference of zero electronegativity, so they pull equally on the electrons, so no, that is a nonpolar bond. And Cl to Br is also nonpolar because the difference between the two is only 0.2. So hopefully you find that really easy to do. You just find them on the chart, you subtract them. If it's 0.5 or greater, it's different enough to be polar. If it's less than 0.5, then it's considered nonpolar. Well, that's bonds. Molecules are slightly different than that. And we gotta understand why. So water has O to H bonds, which we just saw were polar, and water is a polar molecule. We've talked about that in class. CO2, on the other hand, has C to O bonds, which are also polar, yet carbon dioxide, the molecule itself, is nonpolar. So how can that be? How can you have polar bonds and a molecule be nonpolar? Well, that's because shape matters too. So what is the shape of each of these? Hopefully you remember in class that water is a bent molecule. The oxygen has four groups of electrons and three atoms that makes it a bent molecule. The oxygen pulls more strongly on the electrons, so it becomes slightly negative and the hydrogen side becomes slightly positive. And you can see from this slide that, that if we draw it like this, the top is a little negative and the bottom where the hydrogen is, is a little bit positive. So for a molecule to be po polar, one side of the molecule has to be partially positive and the other side has to be partially negative. So you must have two different sides of your molecule. What about carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide is a linear molecule. It has two groups of electrons around the carbon, so it is linear. So when the oxygen pulls more on the electrons, you do get partially negative on by the oxygen and partially positive by the carbon. But the other side is exactly the same. 
oxygen is on the other side, it becomes partially negative and carbon becomes partially positive. So notice this time, because it is linear, the left side is exactly the same as the right, or the top is also the same as the bottom. So one side of the molecule is not different from the other side of the molecule. So this molecule is not polar. You may consider this shape to be symmetrical. You have one side of a molecule the same as the other side of the molecule. So to be a polar molecule, you need two things. You need to have at least one polar bond so that the electrons are being pulled to one side more than the other. And the molecule has to be asymmetric, which is not symmetrical. The only way you can have one side of a molecule different than the other side if there is an asymmetry, if it's not symmetrical. So sometimes people have a hard time looking at the molecule or drawing the molecule and deciding if that shape is symmetric or not. So I'm going to give you some clues and this will be helpful. Some shapes are never symmetric. So that's another way to say that they're always asymmetric. So bent molecules are always asymmetric. They are not symmetrical. Like water, one side, like the drawing we showed, the top is different than the bottom. Pyramids are also the same way. The tops are different than the bottoms. The other shapes can be symmetric, but only if the end atoms are the same. So all the atoms at the end of the molecule have to be the same atom. So if you have a linear molecule and the two ends are the same, like in carbon dioxide, both ends are oxygen, then it can be symmetrical. If you have a tetrahedron like CCl4 and all the ends are Cl, then that is symmetrical. Or if you have something that's trigonal planar and all the ends are the same, then that is symmetric. So to be a polar molecule in review has to have two things. You have to have at least one polar bond, so you have to have one atom pulling more on the electrons than the other, and the molecule itself has to have one side different than the other side. So you need both to be true. To be nonpolar, you just need one or the other. You can have both, but you just need one or the other. So if there are no polar bonds or it is symmetrical, it is symmetrical, that it's nonpolar. Now you can have some molecules that are have no polar bonds and are symmetrical. Those are also nonpolar. But you don't need both, you just need one or the other. So let's try it together and then I'm gonna have you try it yourself. So you can either check the polar bonds or the symmetry first, whichever is easier. You do need to check both if you're deciding if it's going to be a polar molecule because you need both to be true. You need polar bonds and asymmetry. So let's take a look at this molecule that called chloroform, which has a chemical formula of CHCl3. So I have it drawn on the side over here. So here's the molecule over here. So it has two types of bonds. It has a C to an H bond, and it also has a C to a Cl bond. So you have to look up both bonds and see if either of them are polar. You only need at least one polar bond. So if you look up C to H, the difference is 0.4. So this bond right here is nonpolar. But C to Cl has a difference of 0.5. So this is a polar bond. This one is polar and this one is polar also. So we have one of the criteria. We have at least one polar bond. Now we have to decide if it's symmetrical or not. And if obviously you read down the rest of the page, you can see this is asymmetrical. Why? Because it's a tetrahedron, but the ends are not the same. You have a hydrogen on one end, but three chlorides on the other end, or chlorines, excuse me, on the other end. So this is not symmetrical. So for the two reasons, it is has one polar bond and it is asymmetrical. That means this molecule itself is polar. So the bottom part of this molecule is going to pull on the electrons more than the top part. And so this side is going to become slightly negative and this side of the molecule is going to become slightly positive. So now I'm going to let you try it. PCl3, determine the type of bonds and then the shape. And then CH4, determine the types of bonds and then the shape. All right, we'll see how you do.
Thanks for listening. See you in class.